So now um, we've, we've, uh, we have a, a lot of gurus in HSV. And the next speaker is Dr. Dominic Dwyer, who's going to tell us how to best diagnose um, herpes. Um, thanks very much for the introduction. Uh, I, look, I guess the title's a little bit uh, uh, sort of tricky. It's rather than saying, is there a best way, uh, I think we're better off saying that there are many ways, uh, all of which potentially have some problem. Now, look, I know that this is a uh, expert audience in uh, uh, STIs uh, and in herpes, so I don't want to go through uh, the kind of ins and outs uh, of various laboratory tests, except to focus on uh, perhaps some of the more tricky issues. There's a range of types of laboratory tests that can be used to diagnose herpes. Obviously, the gold standard is uh, uh, virus isolation, growing the virus and typing the virus, and we've heard already uh, why typing is important. Because uh, virus isolation is relatively slow and does require specific virologic expertise, uh, people have looked at more rapid tests such as immunofluorescence or even more rapid culture methods to diagnose uh, herpes infections. Uh, PCR or as one of the molecular tests, and there are other variants of molecular tests that can be used, uh, has really made a very big difference to uh, the diagnosis and in particular understanding the pathogenesis of, of herpes infections. The use of type-specific serology, again, has had a lot of airplay over the last few years. Uh, and there are some more sp specialised assays that, that one can use, although they're not really <coughs> commonly used in, in clinical practice. So, so looking for uh, uh, drug resistance, perhaps genotyping, uh, herpes strains and so on, can be done. Again, these are mostly molecular sorts of assays. And as a uh, putting on my pathology hat, Always the testing is done in the context of the appropriate clinical history, and that applies, of course, to any laboratory testing. One of the difficulties with, with herpes, of course, is that the clinical history is so varied or absent, uh, which makes that last comment uh, perhaps not necessarily useful. Uh, this is just a, a slide of a uh, herpes culture, for those of you that may remember Med3 or whatever. Um, but I guess the issue here is, you know, should we be doing cultures anymore? Um, and and uh, I mean, I, I think there are pros and cons uh, with that sort of question. Obviously, uh, virus isolation is a gold standard and it's the most specific test. If you grow the virus and you're, you type the virus, then that's what was present in that lesion. Uh, it's particularly useful for, for confirming the clinical suspicion of, of, of classical uh, herpes presentations, but also has a use in atypical presentations, particularly infection outside the genital area. Uh, and you do need virus isolation to undertake some of the uh, resistance testing and so on that, that's occasionally used. But the big problem, of course, with culture is that it's slow. Uh, that the turnaround time is uh, not clinically useful uh, for immediate patient management. And of course, compared to PCR, um, uh, it's uh, in relatively insensitive. And this is just a slide of immunofluorescence uh, as an example of the rapid test. There are other types of rapid tests that can be used, but immunofluorescence is commonly used in sort of big hospital laboratories. Uh, again, you could argue, well, why should we do sort of rapid immunofluorescence, uh, at least in the clinical practice scenario in, in, outside of, say, the major teaching hospital environment? I think the advantages of immunofluorescence still are that it's very quick. And PCR promises speed, but in practical terms, with, for example, private laboratories centralising PCR services in one spot around the country or hospital laboratories only doing the assays, uh, a certain number of days a week and so on. The speed of PCR is not always what, it, what it's promised. So immunofluorescence is quick uh, and I think uh, that uh, is why we still uh, uh, use it. You can tend to get positive immunofluorescence results from lesions where you can't culture the virus, particularly slightly older lesions. Uh, that is sometimes valuable. Uh, and again, it's uh, uh, useful in some of the atypical clinical presentations uh, or where you think that other infections might be present, such as, say, uh, uh, shingles or, or, or something like that. The problem, however, with immunofluorescence is that it is, at least compared to PCR, uh, uh, less sensitive. Uh, and it does require some specific laboratory equipment and expertise to do. So it very much depends on what you have available as clinicians in your local laboratory. 
PCR, of course, is, 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 is um, uh, sort of very much revolutionised diagnostic medicine. Uh, it's extremely sensitive, at least compared to, to culture and, and PCR, and certainly is quicker than culture, although, as I said, uh, uh, I think immunofluorescence at a practical level is generally quicker. It has particular advantages uh, in certain situations where, for example, the lesions might be relatively old uh, or the, the samples come from specific sites such as the cerebrospinal fluid. And in fact, PCR for herpes is the diagnostic test of choice for herpes encephalitis. Um, it can also be useful for people who are working in environments that don't have ready access to laboratories. So, for example, in some parts of Australia, you, uh, people, even not that far away from Sydney, if the truth be known, but people can, can collect swabs from genital ulcers and, and send them by mail or by courier to laboratories to perform PCR uh, in a couple of days. And you certainly couldn't do that with culture or immunofluorescence. It can also be what we call multiplexed, uh, where, where different primers are added to the mix to pick up other pathogens. Uh, now, there's lots of different ways of doing that, um, but uh, certainly I know one paper from, uh, from Vidral some years ago showed that in fact uh, uh, by, by adding in primers to uh, varicella, they were able to, to determine that about 3 or 4 per cent of people with genital uh, uh, vesicles in fact had varicella or zoster virus infection rather than genital herpes. Um, and perhaps most importantly, or, or most impressively, uh, the, the understanding of disease pathogenesis has been really dramatically improved by PCR. This is a bit complicated, I'm sorry, and you can certainly refer to, to the paper. Again, this is a Seattle group uh, that, that, that do so much of these uh, pathogenesis studies. But uh, the, the take-home message is that if you look at the positivity ratio, and there's a whole range of clinical samples for men and women, uh, co-infected with HIV or not, uh, lesions present or not. But basically, if you look down that positivity ratio, you, you're four times more likely to get a positive PCR than you are to get uh, a, a positive culture from lesions. So again, it, this tells you how more sensitive uh, PCR actually is. And again, I'm sure many of you recognise this slide, which is where PCR was used to, to sort of support the, uh, and confirm the idea of persistent shedding and so on in the absence of clinical disease and how this might respond to antiviral drugs. So that in the top there, you have the, the uh, picture with um, uh, the graph with genital lesions marked on the bottom, clinically apparent lesions, uh, and then people self-collecting vulval and cervical uh, swabs, uh, and they did not just a sort of yes-no PCR, but a quantitative PCR. And you can see that you get shedding, lots of shedding when people have lesions and when people don't have lesions, uh, and that the degree of shedding uh, of virus may vary from, from day to day. And this, of course, helps understand what, how the transmission of herpes occurs, as you all well know, in the absence of clinical disease. And of course, then if you add in uh, prophylactic, prophylaxis, uh, long-term antiviral prophylaxis, you dramatically reduce the amount of shedding, although both in terms of the numbers of days, but also the viral load, if you like, uh, although, of course, it's not uh, reduced to, to, to nothing. So again, very important value of PCR.